What is your reaction that DJ Reader has signed? Two years, 27 mil? 27.25, yes. It's exactly the two-year deal type stuff that they want to do. We talked about a top of the hour. I'll give you the brief reset. It's simple. When DJ Reader's healthy, and again, he's only had, he's had two years with a catastrophic injury. Outside Laddie plays. And he's been one of the 10 or 12 best defensive tackles in football. He's just a damn good football player. So I'm I'm in. The reason I can trust this more than the Carlton Davis thing is your doctors look at it. It's a catastrophic injury. If they don't like what they're seeing, they don't sign him. Carlton Davis, it's like 18 different things. It's always nagging stuff. A toe, a kneecap, an elbow, a rib. My earlobe hurts. Like, it's always something. With DJ Reader, if your doctors trust it, we're good. Do I think it makes you better? Absolutely. You will not run the football on this team. It just won't happen. And DJ Reader has the rare ability as a 340-pound man to also be disruptive on pass rushing downs because he played over 300 pass rushing downs. When he's right, he plays. And it matters. And I think if you put DJ Reader next to Aiden Hutchinson on the inside, yes, you get better. I like this. This, to me, is the best signing of your offseason. I like this one better than Carlton Davis, certainly better than Davenport. I'm not making fun of the Amik Robinson thing because the truth is he's a nickel corner. He's a hard hitter. He's a tough kid. He's small. But, okay, hey, for four or five million bucks, I don't care. Right, Bring him aboard. You're, right, you're not asking him to go out there and be CB1. But this, no, this I can I can vibe with. Do this I is, worry? This is an impact. Do I worry overall that every player you're signing has got some injury stuff? Of course yes. I do. But if your doctors trust what they saw in the rehab of his quad, because he's torn both quads now in his career. Yeah, that's 340-pound wrecking ball that I'm going to put next to Aline McNeil. He's good, man. So I, I'd love to know your reaction to it. I'm in. I needed to get better up front. I had a preference to an edge, but I'll never be mad about a balanced defensive tackle, meaning a guy who's not just a run stuffer. He's not just an occupier. It's a guy you can play on passing downs, and he can help you. Reader's that. Is it fair that the signing of DJ Reader and what they've done in free agency is pushing me towards changing what I want for them in the draft? Oh, well, I... Because that was cornerback. I want... Oh, I need a pass rusher. Absolutely need a pass rusher. David, what if they... And again, I don't want to take the focus from Reader, but like, what if they just believe they've got the pass rusher? They have a right to believe they have their own guy. I'm just from a different school where, like, watching my own team or watching Rico's. The last time the Giants won the Super Bowl, they had eight pass rushers. They had two four-man units on the D-line, and they'd bring in what they called a NASCAR package on third downs, and they ruined Tom Brady. I just don't think you can ever have enough pass rushers. But if they believe they have what they need. And I do think they believe that. Yeah, and look, Reader's unique because you can play him on third downs. Because they've so, had, David, they've had ample opportunity to bring in a pass rusher, and they keep telling you, stop trying to tell me to try the meatballs. I don't want them. <laughs> Perfect. So DJ Reader's a lion, and I dig it. I'm good with it. Um, and like we talked about, whether it was Eric Armstead or Reader, I mean, you could you could make a case that you preferred Armstead. I'm fine with that. But is Reader a better run stopper? Yes. Armstead's a better pass rusher. I think Reader's more balanced. It was just hard for me to get the image of Armstead dominating the Super Bowl. Yeah. But look, bottom line, you got a really good football player. So are are you better? I think you can say yes. Now that you've added an actual high-level player up front, yes. But I don't think it's wrong if you're nervous about it. That's okay. It doesn't make you a bad fan. Mom and dad aren't going to kick you out of the house. If you're worried because each guy, one is coming off a huge injury, the other one just gets hurt every year, it's okay to be worried. But on paper, I think they're better, Rico. Yes. And I don't want to do the whole, like, well, where do they rank in the NFC? I have no idea. The offseason's got to finish. you got to see the draft. Who who blows out a knee in training see, camp the whole say, bit? See, I'm excited about this, uh, this addition. I just need to see him out on the field. Now, if he's out there by week five, week six, and it looks like, okay, it's going to work. Yeah, this, it's great. I'm just concerned about the injuries. No, I'm not a doctor, nor am I the Lions doctor. Just 
You have a history of bringing in injured players, and most of them stay injured. Do you think you've done enough to make the impossible possible? I'd love to hear Lion fans' responses to it. Let's get to the phones. Let's see what they have to say. So DJ Reader, and I think the I don't know I don't know if there's a correlation, but it felt like once the Bengals started inviting D tackles to town, you felt like DJ Reader wasn't getting out of the building if the medicals checked out, and he didn't. Put him next to McNeil. You got two of the top ten defensive tackles in football. Rico, that's real. No, it is. And that, that's going to be a nightmare for offensive coordinators. You got three guys to block two. Good luck with that. I mean, you already really weren't running up the middle last season. Yeah, you ain't going to do it now. And now you just improved that. You made a strength even stronger. Yeah, yeah. You're not. You're not running. I'm telling you. I'll which be, brings a lot of third and longs. I'll be in disbelief if people run the football on this team. Which brings third and longs, which is why I say this is where you need that edge rusher now. Let's go to Mark, 97 1. Mark, what's going on, buddy? Hey, Mike. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to lose my mind if we don't have a new edge rusher on the team by August. This, le- this like feast or famine, Aiden Hutchinson roller coaster is not sustainable. I can't, like, he can't be on the back of a milk card in the NFC Championship. It just can't happen. We desperately needed a sack in that game, and I think it's one of the reasons why we lost. We just couldn't do anything to get that momentum back. But that being said, I really like this DJ Reader signing. I was the guy who wanted Chris Wilkins, can't get him. Let's pivot to Reader. The reason why I say that is because if you have a guy that can stop the run as efficiently as Reader can, as well as with a lean, that's an investment in the edge rusher that I believe the Lions will take in the second or third round. I love Jonah Ellis out of Utah. I've said that before on your show. Yeah. I hope a lot of people do as well. You know, Adisa Isaac, Chop Robinson, whoever you take that are guys that aren't going to do a great job at setting the edge, you're making an investment into that guy. I can go to Jonah, I can go to Chop and say, hey, numb nuts, go kill the quarterback. Like, I like that investment. And like you said, you're making your strength stronger. So I'm I'm, I'm a positive review on the signing. I'm pretty down on this free agent class in general. Like, I don't love Daniel Hunter. I didn't think he was really worth it. Um, I didn't love other guys. I was kind of pissed off at the Brian Burns trade because that would have been fantastic. <laughs> but, well, I mean, yeah, go look, your time, whatever. And it's why I've never been married to one player. I just wanted impact. You don't want Hunter, yeah. you go get somebody else. Uh, it didn't matter to me. I wanted, If you want it, yeah, I wanted Legereus Sneed. Of course I did. I admit that. I love the guy. But I'm not I, the reader thing. If it's reader and Carlton Davis, and the total cost is roughly the 25 mil you would have handed the hunter, I'm not mad about it. Absolutely. Hey, Mike, could I ask you a question about your Giants for the draft? I want to pivot, but I'm curious your thoughts <laughs> sure. on something. Sure. What's going on with Drake May? He's like the inverse JJ McCarthy right now. Like I get it, footwork's bad, yeah. bad decision maker. He needs time to grow. But like I see a ceiling that could be Aaron Rodgers, could be like insane level of talent. And I don't, I don't understand what's going on. I see Chris Sims ranking them six. What's stopping your Giants from just pulling the trigger, saying, you know what, you're going to be a new Eli Manning, and just trading up to two or three to go I, get well, him? Like, I think that might be the path we're seeing how he's fallen. I think part of what stops them is draft capital. I mean, we don't have a second-round pick. We used it to go get Brian Burns. And every year, one quarterback gets smeared. It's just what happens. I, I, I can't explain it. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know what to say. It's clear the riser is JJ. The faller might be Drake May. See, but that would help you. Sure. I would love a quarterback to fall to me. You got me worried. I can't even take JJ at six. Why would I do that? Because you like stress. That's really what it comes I down like to. like stress. 248-539-9797. Lions of signed DJ Reader. We get to your phone calls next. 971.